welcome to Travel Ventures. My name is Ray Jurisic, and I will be your host on this channel. And I'm going to try to show you different amusement parks, theme parks, and local activities that you might explore when you're touring the country. So with that in mind, we're starting this channel here at Cliffs Amusement Park, located in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Now, Cliffs is celebrating this year its 60th anniversary. And here, we're just going to have some footage in the background as I talk about the park a bit on the train ride that goes around the park. So the train ride here starts at the back of the park in the area called Kitty Land. Uh, most of the rides here are for younger children. So we have the Ferris wheel there. We also have uh, the carousel. And we've got a little uh, dogs ride here for them as well as the little 4x4 ride. You can also see in the foreground here, as well as in the back, structure for the big roller coaster at the park, the New Mexico Rattler, which is actually in the top 25 best coasters in the United States. So we will get some footage of the Rattler going around here, and I do have some images from the ride on the channel, as both the intro and outro of my videos. I also will be posting several point of view videos to the channel from my day here at Cliff's Amusement Park. In this shot, you can see the Rattler coming down here, and you can also see the Ring of Fire here in the background. So that's just a traditional sort of Ring of Fire that goes up and around, both forwards and backwards for riders. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of those, but I do understand why some people like them. So a bit more on Cliff's here. My experience at the park, it was a really enjoyable park for a day. I would not say that it's something where you would need to plan more than a day to visit the park. Uh, I was there with my girlfriend, and the two of us were able to get on all the rides we pretty much wanted in the time that we had at the park. And the park had been open from 11 till 5 on that day. The times do vary, so do check the schedule on their website as to what hours they are open. One critique I had of the park with the time that it was open is the fact that it was open during the hottest part of the day. Now, especially for those people who are aware of how New Mexico is and such, the hottest part of the day in the summer can be really oppressive. The park does a great job of having some misters around along with some giant cooling fans to try and help take care of the heat a bit, but it really is one of those where it does become uh, a little bit overbearing on you. We definitely had to take breaks at point in time, make sure we stayed hydrated, got drinks from the park and such. And that is something to keep in mind when you're visiting. I would recommend trying to go for one of the days that they might be open later and getting there a bit later so that you don't have to deal with the heat. Now this was a ride that was closed at the park on the day. It's a log flume here. Um, was something that I was sort of excited on trying, but as I said, you can sort of see here at the bottom of the rampway that there's a chain across that's blocking entry to the area so it seems like for whatever reason it was closed on a particular day um, next to the ring of fire here we have backdraft which is a ride where you sit in these uh sort of sofa cushion style seats and it lifts you up and spins you in a circle and then the air pressure sort of bounces you up and down it's a fun little ride, not too extreme, I would say. If you have an issue with rides that go in a circle, it may be something that you do want to be cautious about. One thing that I did want to note, and you will see throughout the train ride here, is that all of the staff at the park are really very friendly. Um, I have to say, having been to many parks, I was really pleased with the staff here at this particular park. They all took the time to wave when you're on the train. Uh, they were all very friendly if you needed to stop, ask a question. When we went to stands to get food or anything like that, they were very friendly. Just ride staff was also very friendly in scanning your wristband and getting you onto the rides. Um, in the background there, you can see Galaxia, or Galaxy. Um, it is one of the two major coasters that's at the park. The other one, of course, being the Rattler. Uh, it is one that I have a POV that will be on the channel for. It is a single uh, car roller coaster. They have three cars in rotation currently, but it only allows for four people at a time because it does run the one car with no other cars attached to it. It is a nice little coaster. Nothing too extreme, I would say. So for people that are sort of getting into roller coasters or maybe, you know, for the younger audiences, something that's somewhat entertaining. 
the Rattler is definitely a much uh, more expansive coaster, and being a wooden coaster, it is a bit more on the rough side. So if you're one of those people who does get a little bit sore by a lot of uh, rough vibration and stuff, that might be something you do want to keep in mind. Uh, with the Rattler, one of the issues I had for it is I am actually 6'2", so my knees kept bouncing against the front of the car, and so trying to get into position to record for a POV on the Rattler was a bit of a challenge because I just was sort of squashed into the seat. It is an old wooden coaster, and that's just one of those things that does happen on those, so nothing really against the park for that. It is a ride I would say definitely try while you're at the park, but do be warned, as I said, it is a little bit rough because it is a wooden coaster. Now we're here in the middle of the park right now. As you can see, they've sort of done this western themed area here that really the entire purpose of it is for the train ride, it seems. There's no businesses or anything in it. It's just sort of here to give that old west sort of style to it. And you will notice a couple of different times on the train ride that it does have these areas to it, which are just themed. And I really like that because it is an amusement park, definitely. But I like the fact that they do have some theming going on to it, even if it's just in certain locations. With the train ride, it is one of those things that definitely I like transportation rides throughout a park as it is. And I felt like at this particular park, it was a great thing because it does really show you most of the park. So you could take it early on in the day if it's open at that point. On the day we went, it didn't open till later in the day, but it did really allow us to get an idea of what was going on in the park and just everything that was available. So with this, we're getting closer here to uh, Galaxy. As I said, you can see the one car style that's up there at the top of the ride right now. Um, there are food vendors throughout the park, so you do not have to feel like you have to go to one in particular. I would note that they do sell different things at the different food vendors. So, like, one had more your standard meals of, like, burgers, chicken strips, things of that nature. The one we just passed there had uh, more fairgrounds-type things, like funnel cakes. And then we had also gone to another one that did things like Dippin' Dots ice cream. So, you do sort of want to explore the food options to sort of decide what you want to eat before selecting. We sort of <laughs> felt bad about it in the end, because if we had known that there had been the uh, funnel cake option, we probably would have gotten that at a point, instead of getting the Dippin' Dots that we did get. But, that's just one of those to keep in mind for the park when you go there in the future. As I said, there are different food options. Each sand does not sell the same thing. Prices, I felt, were fairly reasonable considering it's amusement park. A uh, meal cost you roughly about $10, so not too, too bad overall. Uh, one thing to note is that they did only take credit card. They do not take cash, so make sure you've got a credit card or debit card with you when you are at the park. So, as you can see here, we just went sort of behind the uh, roller coaster here. As I said, there are two adult coasters at the park. There is also a third coaster, which is located over in Kitty Land. We will see it here uh, on the way back through the park. And it is a spinning coaster that's got a figure eight configuration. I do have a point of view coming out for that as well. It's called Spinorama. Even though it was a kid's coaster, I found it really entertaining. Um, it's one of those... I had not been on roller coasters till very recently for many years. I used to love coasters, but life, other circumstances had gotten in the way, and I just hadn't been on coasters for some time. So in that time period, a lot of new coasters have come out. So you will see videos on this channel where I am trying out coasters that just hadn't existed before. Now here we see the water park section of the park. It is a fairly small water park section. As you can see, it's just a few uh, slides overall and a few things that'll dump water onto the guests and such. You can uh, have your swimsuit on over there and stuff. And it is included in the park. It's mostly for the little kids, I would say. But especially on a hot day like this, it is not a bad idea to go cool off there. Here you can see the one water ride outside of that that was functioning on the day, which is a log ride. Um, I did notice with this particular log ride that people weren't getting too wet on the ride overall. It really didn't splash water in a way that really would get you soaked. So that's one of those, if you're looking for it to get you soaked, you're not going to find that here. But if you're just looking for the fun ride and you're sort of worried about getting overly soaked, 
don't worry too much on this ride. It will be perfectly fine for you. I did really like, here we can see the park, the water park a little bit more. And you can get a glimpse of those uh, different slides as they're going past. But I do really like this portion of the park and the way it's set up. We have this uh, swing here that I will also have an on-ride POV from. And it's set up almost on like a concrete island in the middle of this lake that goes with the log ride. So while you're on the ride, you're really over the water for the most part. It really gives a neat perspective. I've been on a couple of these swings before, but I've never seen one where it was just over the water like this one is. So that was something of note. As I said, the park overall, really well manicured, really well designed. It's a nice park, and even though you are in the middle of a fairly large city in Albuquerque, you don't really feel it once you're in the park. Um, you really sort of forget that the city's around you there, and you're just in the park, which is a really nice feature that a lot of smaller amusement parks like this don't have. Um, I did notice a, also with this water ride, just going back to it for a moment here, the log ride, uh, it really does move around this bottom section very quickly, a bit faster than I'm used to with these uh, log rides. And really, there's more of a chance, it seems like, of getting wet on that bottom portion than there is actually on the splashdown itself. Uh, that that whole area around the bottom there does have almost a rapids-like effect to it, so it does give you the opportunity for a little bit of water to come up and possibly splash you. As you can see here, as I said, all the... Uh, Staff are, for the most part, wearing those sort of neon green shirts. And you'll notice pretty much every single one of them that's there does go ahead and wave as the train comes by. I don't know if it's a requirement at Cliffs, but I really did like the fact that the park made it very friendly. They were very much hospitable to the guests. Here's security, does the same exact thing. And it really is great in that aspect because it does make it feel more warm and inviting overall. That tower you saw in the background there is a drop tower. They do have a fairly decent drop tower at this park. And here we are seeing a bit more of the Rattlers layout, as well as the uh, swings here. It is a fairly large sky swing that they have going on here. It does rotate and such. And one of the things I really do like about the park's design overall is, as you can see here, the swing is sort of almost surrounded by the Rattler. And it really is nice that the wooden coaster sort of goes through most of the park overall, and that other rides have sort of been fit in around that major coaster. So it's sort of like the coaster envelops the other rides. Probably gives some really good views from a ride like the swings. I didn't uh, go on that this particular time, was trying to get on some of the other rides and do some repeat rides that I had wanted to get on. Here was another one, the Tilt-A-Whirl. I do enjoy going on these often. This one did not seem to be operating on that particular day. I don't know if it was just down for maintenance or what the real reason was for it. Here we're going to see this ride uh, that basically just lifts you up into the air. It's fairly calm and just sort of like a Miami wave, but a bit more toned down than that. Right now we're seeing the back of the Music Express building. This is a uh, Matterhorn style ride but without the swinging seats to it. It does go both forwards and backwards, which a, another local park that I will be visiting here in the future on this channel, uh, Western Playland, has one also named the Himalaya, but that one only goes forwards. This one's a bit better, I would say, as far as the actual ride experience. Now here we're sort of at a corner of the park, and instead of just letting us see the outside world, they take us into this little shed that they have here which really works out quite nicely. They've themed up the shed. It does not have animatronics to it or anything of that nature. But as you can see here, they've done a nice job making sort of these uh, Old West looking buildings inside here. They have a few characters set up. And as I said, it's considering that it is an amusement park and not a theme park, I was pleasantly surprised with little touches they had like this going on, where it just gives a little bit more feel to the park overall. As we come out of here, you will be able to see the street that's outside of the park there to the right. And here we have another back of a building. This is, uh, the building coming up here is going to be the one where they house the uh, bumper cars, the adult version of the bumper cars. I believe they also did have a children's version. And there you could see for a moment there that sort of Miami Wave style ride that they have. As I said, it 
isn't as intense as a standard Miami wave. It doesn't go up and around nearly as quickly as the standard ones. So it is the type of ride that a younger child could go on. And it's one of those, that kind of a ride is really great because of the fact that kids might be scared of those type of rides as they're sort of getting into amusement parks. But it gives them some experience and with a little bit less fear than the larger versions would have. And so they can work their way up to those larger versions. Here we're just sort of going behind some of the food vendors and things that they have there, along with some of the back of house type of things. You'll see here through the fence some like trash cans and such. Basically this is the area where you have to have in a park in order to make the park function, but it's not really for guests to see. So they put up that wood uh, fencing there. On the right hand side you can see the street, you can see some cars through it, but they did for the most part have some nice vines and stuff on it so that if those vines would grow in fully you wouldn't even really notice that the uh, the road was out there, which is a nicety. Here we see, as I said, there is the third coaster at the park. This is the children's coaster, the Spinorama, and it has those rotating seats to it. As I said, I've never been on one of those before going to Cliffs Amusement Park, but I really did enjoy the ride. It's a fun ride. It gives you a very different experience to your traditional coaster. You really don't even notice sort of the drop sensation of the coaster or the speed, but instead it's sort of like a combination of a tilt-a-whirl with a coaster. And it really works out nicely with that. And again, here we are in Kitty Land. You can see here as well the carousel and such. And then a few of the other rides for children here. They have like this small little, what they call a frog hopper, which is like a small drop tower for younger children. And then the cliff swing set, which is also for younger children. And it just swings back and forth gently. It is a nicety about cliffs where it does have things for both young children as well as grown adults. But with that in mind, the train ride's coming to an end. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. If you did enjoy though, please go ahead and click the like button. If you've not already, please subscribe to the channel. Click the bell icon so that you're aware when I produce new videos in the future. Thank you. I hope to see you again for the next travel venture.